Welcome back to Live, Laugh, Love with Jen. In today's video, I am going to take you with me on my journey from stiletto career to slipper domestic. Stay tuned. So I just want to rewind to about four years ago. Four years ago, I was driving to work every day, listening to Taylor Swift shake it off. And I was doing that so that I could get my energy for the day and so that I would not cry. Then on the way home from work, I had no music and tears. Nights were hard, I cried. Weekends were really hard. Any type of holiday was crazy impossible. Lots of crying, lots of tears. But I was like, I went to college to have this career. I don't wanna be a quitter. I had a lot of hard decisions that I needed to make. And even though I did not want to be known as a quitter, I could no longer do my job and do it well because it was causing me a lot of stress. So I decided to switch gears and stay at home. So I just want to talk to you guys about pages that I went through personally. Maybe you guys, some of, maybe you can relate. Maybe there's a life change that you're going through. But I want to share with you kind of my five stages that I went through to accept my new domesticness. The first thing was, hey, it's vacation. Like, I don't ever have to listen to Shake It Off ever again in my life. I don't have to cry because I have to wake up and go to work. I don't have to dread going to sleep because when I wake up, I have to go somewhere where I'm uncomfortable. So it was like this little bit of excitement. And so it was like vacation. It was like the honeymoon period. But there was a part of me that was running too because I still cared about what everybody out there was thinking about me. And I did not want anybody to think that I was a quitter. So... You know, I was like, oh, you want to go to a concert on a Thursday night? Yes, let's go. And I was just doing things with friends constantly on the go, trying to escape the fact that, A, I kind of deep down felt like a quitter, but also I just kind of felt like I was on vacation. And this honeymoon period, I would say, lasted for about six good months. Then I moved into the side hustle, the realization that, oh my goodness, I'm at home. I need to contribute some way possible. This is whenever I became Miss Volunteer, Miss Help Your Friends, Get Their Kids to School, Pick Their Kids Up, Miss Selling Jewelry, Selling a Little Bit of Everything and Anything. And that was a distraction for me because I was still doing stuff outside the home and I was very busy, so I could not think about the fact that I was a quitter and I was helping others. Well, there are several problems with this. The first problem was, A, I'm an empath. And selling stuff is just, let me just be real. I was giving a lot of stuff away because, like, I knew that maybe someone could not afford groceries for the week if they bought this necklace they wanted. So I was like, here, have the necklace. Um... So yeah, so like, although I could sell stuff, like I just felt really weird about doing that. I just felt uncomfortable about doing that. And volunteering, it was like I was half giving a little bit here and a little bit there. And I felt like probably other people were thinking like, 
why is she like half doing this job? Because they didn't realize that I had like a thousand other volunteer things going on. Plus, you know, I'm trying to take care of all my family, all my friends, just staying on the go constantly. And that lasted for like, honestly, almost a year. And after a year of that, I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm start, I can't do it anymore. I'm burnt out. So then I entered the third phase for me, which was, I was just burnt out. I was tired. And I started to like stop doing some of these things. And in the process, I started to kind of feel a little sorry for myself. Like, this stinks. I am, this stinks. I went back to the I'm a quitter. At this point, as memories often do, the shake it off, driving to work thing became a distant memory. And the memories that I had of my career were the good memories that I had. So I'm thinking like, should I go back to work? Like maybe I wasn't as miserable as I thought I was. And I was just really tired um, really confused, did not want to be a quitter. And that kind of led into my next phase, which was kind of like a isolation pity party kind of phase. This is where I'm still thinking about the outside world and what they might think. And I'm taking things that I heard maybe as a child or just from society about like, do people think I'm staying at home eating bonbons all day and watching soap operas or whatever? Or do they think I'm lazy? Um, what might other people think about this? And the more I thought about that, the more I started to beat myself up and the more I started to isolate myself. So I went through this phase of isolation where I might, um, where someone would text me and I might not text back. And I started to feel like no one in the world understood me. And I started to feel like this domestic life, this homemaker life was like a prison sentence that I was serving. I started to look at it like, this is like the worst possible thing. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? It was kind of at this time that I started my Live, Laugh, Love channel because I was like, okay, I'm cleaning. So maybe I can film it and that will help get me motivated and... Right after I started my channel, um, some of you guys who have watched me for a while know that I guess it was maybe four months after I started my channel, I had some medication weight gain. I did not want to film and the depression just grew worse and worse. And I just started isolating myself more and more because I'm like, if I'm not around these people, they're not going to think about if I'm not around people. They're not going to think about me and they're not going to care that I'm watching soap operas and eating bonbons, which was not what I was doing. And I think there's only like two soap operas that I could watch anyway. I finally moved into this last, into the phase that I'm currently in. And I'm hoping that maybe this is the last phase and it's the acceptance phase. One day I was here and I was home alone and I looked around my home and I was like, why do I feel like this is a prison sentence? What a blessing I have in front of me. And for some reason, my mindset in that moment started to change. And I was like, I have this wonderful opportunity. I can be a homemaker. I can channel my inner Martha Stewart. I can make gourmet meals if I want to. I can do whatever I want inside this home for the people that I love and I can still have a life and it doesn't matter what other people may or may not think. So when I had that mind shift, which took me way too long, which I feel like sometimes took me way too long to have it. But when I started making that mind shift, so many things changed. Like I wanted to be the first one up in the mornings because maybe I wanted to make breakfast or I wanted to go walk or I wanted to do something. And I started doing chores and doing things out of love and out of gratitude and out of like, this is my job and I'm gonna rock it. Like I rocked a career, I can totally do this. 
And, you know, I started thinking, I'm like, I can iron my sheets if I want to iron my sheets, whatever I want to do. It just totally, like, anxiety was lifted. So much was lifted off of me for just accepting the very gift that has been in front of me the whole time. Yes, I quit something that does not define me as a quitter. I did it for, to me, anyone who is having to listen to Taylor Swift, shake it off on their way to work, coming home, crying, being miserable to everybody that loved them because they were so unhappy and you have the opportunity to leave that position, leave. It's okay. It's okay to quit. It's okay to change directions. And, you know, throughout this whole time, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should go back to school and do something else. Or maybe I should um, go back to, like, doing what I was previously doing. But then I'm like, you know, I am getting to share this journey with you guys. You might be in a similar situation. If a few years ago, I could have watched this and had someone tell me, you're going to, you know, you're going to run for a while. You're going to feel like a quitter for a while. You're going to do these things. It might have helped because I would have kind of known what to expect, but I went at it on my own. And I just, you know, I went from stilettos and skirts to slippers. So that's why I titled this from stilettos to slippers. And kind of what I'm trying to say is that I'm in this place where I feel like I'm kind of getting in this zone and I'm more motivated to meet my goals. I'm happier. And my true self loves heels. I love pearls. I love blingy things. I always have. There is a picture of me that my parents have on their refrigerator when I was probably about three, four years old and I had climbed a tree, but I had on like pearls and little fancy shoes and a fancy outfit. That's me. That's who I am and that's okay. And so if you guys ever see me do a video and I am in stilettos or heels and I am cleaning, applaud me because you're going to be like, she is finding her way. She is finding out how to live her best domestic life. If you are in a situation like this, you are not alone. You are more than welcome to private message me. If you ever need to, you can hit me up on Instagram, whatever because I'm here for you and I know what it's like and I know what changes are like. And as humans, we sometimes resist change. Along the way, I am learning to be authentically me, to not worry about anybody outside of these walls, what they can what they think about me, and to love this opportunity that I've been given and to share it with you guys. I'm presented with this opportunity to help you guys as well. And, you know, we're going to do this together. I'm going to do stuff, and it's going to be like an epic fail. Laugh with me, live with me, and love with me. Because after all, even if you've quit something, or something hasn't gone like you thought it should go, or whatever, we all deal with it in different ways. No matter what other people think. It matters how you feel and how comfortable you are in your own skin. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Sorry about my, I don't know what this is called. I guess like a little messy bun. I've been cleaning and embracing my inner Martha Stewart and domestic whatever you want to call it. So I just kind of took a break from that um, to do this little video. And so right now this is how my domesticating looks. I am here for you no matter what. And I love you. Thank you guys for your support. See you guys in the next one. Remember, take time to live, laugh, and love today.